Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, today we thank you, Almighty God, for everything that you are doing to our lives. We thank your resurrection power. We thank your resurrection power. We thank your resurrection power. We thank your power of the Holy Ghost. We thank your power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father. Yes, thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, power of the living God. We bless your holy name. In this time and hour, we call upon your name. We say to you, are holy, there is none like you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. We honor, we glorify your name. There is none like you. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the power of resurrection that is embedded in our lives. Today we decree resurrection of our jobs, of our businesses, of our marriages. We thank you, Lord, for the resurrection of our lives, resurrection of our destiny, Resurrection of our power, resurrection of our wealth, resurrection of our children, resurrection of our communities, resurrection of our continent of Africa, let alone the whole world in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are in this series of power of resurrection. You are all welcome. This is the Apostles People Wisdom Canada all the way from South Africa. Yes, stationed in Pretoria in the name of Jesus. Today we are going to, throughout the whole of this week, hopefully we are going to look at the power of resurrection and see where God has played a pivotal role in the resurrection of our lives, in the resurrection of businesses, in the resurrection of every endeavor that we find in the Bible in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much in the name of Jesus. We declare, we declare that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Moko shaka talarabayede. Zeka talarabo shatarabayede. Hila talarabo shatarabayede. Hila talarabo kotalarabo sotoro boyana. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Today we want to give thanks unto God for resurrecting, you know, buried things, because the kingdom of darkness loves to bury things. The kingdom of darkness destroys, kills, and ensures that it's still on our virtues. But we see the restoration of our lives, restoration of property, restoration of number of things. We thank God that he resurrected from the grave. We are no longer going to go to the grave and look for the living among the dead because the dead are dead. But Jesus was resurrected from the dead. The Bible reads in Philippians chapter 3. Yes, chapter 3 has to do with no confidence in the flesh. Yes, because we need to press towards the goal. We need not to have confidence in the flesh. But we need to ensure that we are pressing on towards the goal. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. That I may know the power of his resurrection. The power of his, I may know him, I may know Jesus Christ. Number two, I may know also the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, in the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. 
would also read the, the similar Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 is a very interesting chapter because it speaks about life through the Spirit. Life through the Spirit. Verse 17. And if children then hears the hairs of God and join hands with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We are must be glorified together. When you read the book of uh, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 2, this is another interesting book because it speaks around the power of God. But here now it gives us a confirmation with him. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 and has raised up together and has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. <laughs> we are raised up with him we are sitting together with him Jesus in heavenly places we are not in heaven but we are in heavenly places <laughs> yeah, in heavenly places that's why we start to enjoy the benefits of being with him because Psalm 110, this one says, Then the Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand side until I make your enemies a footstool. Where we are seated with Him, we are seated with Him in heavenly places. When we are seated with Him in heavenly, we are raised up with Him. We are raised up together with Him. And we are seated with Him in heavenly places. Having been seated with him in heavenly places, God is telling us that we need to sit on his right hand side. And he is giving us a promise that until he finish off all our challenges, all our enemies shall become a footstool. Because in the book of Exodus chapter 23, I think verse 24 to 25, he also confirms that if you obey him, as I said to this angel, you obey him, you follow him, his principles, then his enemies, our enemies will be his enemies. He's also confirming in the book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 25 to say, ah, ah, anyone that is contending you, I shall contend him. That is why David is crying in the book of Psalms 35, this one. My father, content them that content us. We are seated with you in heavenly places. We are resting with you. We are at comfort. We don't suffer anything. But you are the one to ensure that we are master rule in the midst of our enemies. In the name of Jesus. We are in heavenly places together with our blessings because God has given us the spiritual blessings and the very same spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Oh, the devil is also in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against cosmic powers in heavenly places. Oh my God. But the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to withstand the tricks of the devil or the wires of the devil. Therefore, today we are speaking about the power of resurrection. When we talk of resurrection, we talk of restoration of life. There was once life, then came death. And another life came again. This is what we call resurrection. You resurrect. One important aspect of the biblical description of the resurrection is the call to spread the Christianity. 
as widely as possible often called the Great Commission when you read the book of the the, 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 the book to say go ye into the world go ye, go ye, go ye in the name of Jesus this Great Commission is also called in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 12 44 to 49 the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 14 to 18 the book of Acts chapter 4 chapter 1 verse 4 to 8 the book of John chapter 20 19 to 23 in which Jesus orders here the disciples to preach repentance to preach forgiveness in the name of Jesus therefore it is paramount important that we connect it to this resurrection power this week it is, we are celebrating his resurrection we'll also be recalling number of incidents where people were resurrected we are also celebrating our resurrection of our lives because of healing that has taken place all our businesses are restored all our positions that were stolen by the devil are being restored Oh, this is the resurrection. Therefore, he is instructing his disciples to say, you sit here until you are endured with power. Yes, Luke 24, verse 49. Sit, tarry here until you are endured with power. Then you'll start to start to see the mighty works of the Lord in the book of Acts. You know, they came together in one accord. They were to the Holy Ghost. And, you know, miracles, signs, and wonders happened. They started to preach Peter, Apostle Peter, preached repentance, preached forgiveness. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, the Bible says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are called out of darkness and from the kingdom of darkness into a marvelous light, into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of God. As I said earlier on, Psalm 110, that's why the Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand side until I make your enemies a footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion rule in the midst of your enemies thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power there is a certain power that once you get this power you can be able to do signs, wonders and miracles because this is the power of God the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 17 the disciples were there Jesus was there, the Pharisees, the Sadducees the zealots and all, all, all. And the people were also there. And the power of God. This is the power of resurrection that was there. The power of resurrection, you know, and God, and God entered into the children of God. And they started to do what was. Thank you so much for watching Peter in the name of Jesus. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. We are endured with power because we've got lots and lots of things that must be done. We need to do some work in the name of Jesus. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. We, we, we are waiting for the day of thy power. We need to prepare ourselves as we are in the process of his ascension. He resurrected on Sunday. Today is Monday. Oh my God. Today is Tuesday. Now, it's almost 39 days having been resurrected. Come 40 the day when you will be ascending. We will be endured with power and we shall continue to do the works. Then we are celebrating his resurrection in the name of Jesus. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of his holiness. From the womb of thy morning, you has due of thy womb. The Lord has shown and will not repent. You art priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest after the order of Melchizedek. 
Yes, in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray, my Father, in the name of Jesus. Any dead person that is tying us down in the name of Jesus, let it release us now in the name of Jesus. Oh, garment of nakedness and shame, I am not your candidate. Catch fire now, we are not your candidate. You garment of nakedness, you garment of death, we are not your candidate. Today we say catch fire now because we've got the fire of resurrection in the name of Jesus. Finger of the wicked, come out of our bodies now. Finger of the wickedness, finger of the wickedness. Whatever sickness that is on us, we are speaking power. You come out in the name of Jesus. Any curses from the hood. Yes, of our mother. Yes, any cases from the head of our father. Oh, we are not your candidate. You must die now in the name of Jesus. We shall not suffer a wish to live. We've got a life to live. Yes, we, we are under the umbrella of blessings. We are as we are experiencing the showers of blessings, not the showers or the storms of curses in the name of Jesus. We say, you curses from my father's house, from my mother's house. What are you waiting for? Pack your load and go. Powers to determine. Those powers determine to make me cry. We shall not cry. Any power that has fashioned us to cry, we shall not cry. You evil powers, you are determined to make us cry. Your time is up in the name of Jesus. We are speaking resurrection. We are connecting to the power of God. The power of God, the power of God, because He sent His word and His word delivered them. His word sustained them. Yes, in the name of Jesus, the word preserved them. We are speaking the power of God that is bringing resurrection. We are speaking the power of God that is bringing restoration and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Any power that was determined to make us cry, any power that was determined to make us to lose what was due to us. In the name of Jesus, I decree by the message of God that as he has resurrected, our things are resurrected. Our jobs, our promotion, our health, our marriages, our families, yes, our communities are being resurrected now because we are in heavenly places. Yes, we are living like people who are in heavenly places. We are living like people who are rich because of the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank God in the name of Jesus. We say powers expanding our battles. Any power that has been fashioned to expand our battle. We are endured with the power of God. According to Luke chapter 24 verse 49. He says, stay here, stay here until you are endured with power. Stay here until you are endured with power. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. We are seated with him in heavenly places. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Yes, we are enjoying all our benefits. All the spiritual blessings that are in heavenly places. We are seated on his right hand side. Because every power, every evil power, every principality, every wickedness. Yes, any authority that is in the heavenly places is being fought by Jesus. Yes, the power is fighting that. We are in a place of protection in the name of Jesus. We say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost fire arise. Deliver us from any satanic detention. Now we are risen with him. And he raised us up with him. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Therefore, powers expanding our battles. Today you die in the name of Jesus. Yes, we say, Holy Ghost fire arise. Deliver us from any satanic detention. Deliver us from any satanic detention. In the name of Jesus. If you deliver Paul from that satanic detention, deliver us now, O oh Lord. Deliver us now, O oh Lord, from any evil power that we know that we do not know. From any evil power through generational curses. Whatever vow that was made, whatever altar that was made against our lives, today we decree that we are released. We are released from any satanic detention in the name of Jesus. You know what? There is power that can wake up dead virtues. This is the power of God. Now, that's why Paul is saying, 
if I may know him and the power that resurrected him from the grave. This is the power that can wake up dead vitreous. This is the power that can reconstruct a, a scattered life. If your life is scattered, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of God is with us now in the name of Jesus. As he resurrected from the grave, he is resurrecting every dead virtue. Yes, he is reorganizing our lives. He is realigning us in the name of Jesus. We are taking a full, a full control of our lives. Yes, this is the power that can bring, bring into life dead businesses, dead programs, dead promotions. Any delay will take its load and it will go. Any denial will take its load and it will go. This is the power that is opening all the doors that were closed by the enemy. And the enemy will not be able to close those doors because those doors are open. This is the power that is opening all the doors that were closed. It's also closing all the doors that were opened by the enemy. In the name of Jesus. This is the power of God that can manufacture new organs and put inside the body in the name of Jesus. We are speaking restoration. We are speaking resurrection. Should anything happen in your body, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, as a prophet of God, I am speaking healing. I am speaking healing. I am speaking healing. If he spoke healing in the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 10 to 13, there was a daughter of Abraham with the spirit of infirmity, but he spoke a word, he spoke power, and immediately that 18 year old sickness of that sister, the daughter of Abraham, we see that she was delivered, she was healed, she was healed, I'm speaking healing upon your life, from the crown of your head to the sole of your body, and the spirit of infirmity, and the spirit of sickness and disease, in the name of Jesus, I say catch this fire, catch this anointing, catch this power of God, that is bringing resurrection. If the power of God was able to resurrect Jesus from the grave, who heaven are we not to be resurrected? I am speaking that your position at work is being restored. I am speaking and I'm prophesying that you are getting promotions. You are moving from one level to another. You are moving from one dimension to another. You are, you are experiencing new manifestations in the name of Jesus. I am speaking healing. By his stripes we are healed. When he was, when he was on the cross, he exposed the principalities, the superpowers, the wickedness. Yes, all in public. He defeated them in public. He said, it is finished. All your calamities are finished. All your problems are finished. All your enemies will be finished. That's why we say, Psalm 68, verse 1, Arise, O Lord, let our enemies be scattered. You are a God that is full of power. Second Tim chapter 4, verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me. Yes, and preserve me from the hands of thy enemies. Yes, they will fight us, but they shall not prevail. Why? Because of this power. This is the power of God that can bring back to life any dead business, any dead ministry, any dead virtue, anything that the enemy has buried, it is coming alive. It is coming alive. It is coming alive. Your life, your profession, you are moving forward in the name of Jesus. This is the power that can manufacture new organs and put inside the body in the name of Jesus. You kidney failure, you lung failure, you any organ inside our system that is dysfunctional. Now receive the power of God. I am speaking healing in the name of Jesus. No more sickness, no more disease. Whatever that was, was a red sea in front of you. That red sea, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it is being opened. And you shall move forward in the name of Jesus. This is the power of God that carry out spiritual surgery and reorganization. This is a spiritual surgery. You shall be operated when you lie on your bed, when you sit, when you are relaxing, 
God will start to operate you emotionally, spiritually, physically, even mentally, in the name of Jesus. You shall be, yes, you shall receive that spiritual surgery in the name of Jesus. This is the power of God. If I may know this power that resurrected Christ from the dead, if I may know him, that resurrected power that raised up Jesus and us, and we are seated up in heavenly places. If I may know this power, this power is forever with Jesus. This power, wherever Jesus is going, even the woman with an issue of blood, touch the power of God, touch the power of resurrection, touch the power of healing, touch the power of healing, touch the power of healing. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Yours is just to confirm. By his stripes we are healed. We have cast the hem of his garment. We are receiving his power. That will stop any hemorrhage. Emotionally, spiritually, physically. Any hemorrhage at work. Any hemorrhage in the ministry. Any hemorrhage. Any bleeding that is taking place. My father today. I decree that with the power. This hemorrhage come to an end. It doesn't matter how long this hemorrhage has taken place. It doesn't matter the damage. It doesn't matter the money we've spent. But we know, my father, that you are the restorer of Israel. You are the restorer of life. My father, carry out your spiritual surgery. You shall not go for an operation. You shall not waste your money on physicians. You shall not waste your money moving up and down. You shall not buy this and that, this and that, whereas there is no problem. Just be develop your faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. The woman with an issue of blood, yes, heard about you, and she confessed, and she said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. This is the power that can bring the power of God. Yes, this is the power that can bring the power of God. Let the power of God be with us. Resurrection power. We are connecting to the resurrection power. When we walk, the power of God is with us. When we walk, the power of God is with us. We shall not experience any accidents. We shall not experience any sickness and diseases. We shall not experience any lack. We shall not experience any failure. We shall not experience any breakdown. We declare and we declare that when he resurrected, we are seated with him in heavenly places. We are seated with him. We are not standing. We are not walking. We are seated. And we are positioned on the right hand side of the Father. He is the one who is fighting for us. We are endured with power. So that we can be able to preach deliverance and restoration, healing and forgiveness in the name of Jesus. This is the power that can wake up dead bodies. This is the power that can wake up dead emotions. This is the power that can wake up anything that is not functional. Anything that has reached a point of a death breakdown. Today we decree that this power, this power is going to raise up. Is going to raise up anything that has been done. Your children, your children, your ministry, your business is being restored in the name of Jesus. There is a power that can remove every evil plantation in your body. The enemy came at midnight and planted something and planted something. Matthew chapter 13 verse 25. The Bible says while man slept at midnight, the enemy came and planted some weeds. When this man arose in the morning, he said, ah, ah, ah. when it's time for harvest, he said, ah, 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 I never planted this. But Jesus said, the enemy has done this. The enemy has done this evil plantation. The enemy has done this evil plantation in your ministry. No wonder why your ministry is not going well. The enemy has planted evil plantation in your life. That's why you've got sicknesses, diseases, infirmities, strange pains. You can't walk. You can't, you know, all these sorts of things, but the power of God, 
is removing every evil plantation, even in your yard. Whatever the enemy has planted, the power of God is uprooting, is destroying, is blacking out any satanic deposit, even mentally, spiritually, you know, physically. I am speaking. Yeah, I am speaking. I am speaking destruction to the camp of the enemy, destruction to the evil plantation. Yes, destruction. We black out, we destroy, we put out. To the roots, any satanic plantation. I don't care what type of plantation the enemy has done against your life, but I decree that in 2022 you shall operate under open heavens. You are resurrected. Your things are resurrected. Ephesians 2 6. We he rose up Jesus and us. We were rose up with him. And we were rose up. We are seated in heavenly places. We are relaxed. We are on his right hand side. He is the one that is dealing with our footstool. As I said, Psalms 110. I will make your enemies a footstool. Yes, every evil plantation in your life. I decree as a prophet of God that it is losing its power. It is being blacked out. It is rooted out. And it is being destroyed in the name of Jesus. Any satanic plantation in your womb through the incapas and the sacapas spirit, through the spiritual husband, spiritual wife, spiritual girlfriend, spiritual boyfriend, anything that is living with you, anything that is bringing evil plantation in your body. Today I say you pack your loaf and you go in the name of Jesus. We are resurrected. We are no longer on the valley. But we are in the fountain. We are in the mountain. We are the Elijahs of today. We call fire when our enemies are looking for us. They will find us on top of the mountain. When we say, if I'm a man of God, if I'm a woman of God, I can't come down as you call me. But let the Holy Ghost fire come down. Let the power of God come down and consume them. We are raising an altar of God. We are calling upon the fire. We are calling upon the power of God to come and consume the sacrifice that we are making. We want Jehovah that will answer by fire. The very same fire is the power of God in the name of Jesus. We thank you so much in the name of Jesus. All those that are watching us, we declare, we declare that any evil plantation in your body any satanic operations at midnight, the night raiders, those that are raiding your destiny, those that are blocking, all those that are coming to plant evil things, wild men slept, the enemy came and fed you with the food ah, that satanic food that you ate in the name of Jesus, let it be roasted by fire, let it be roasted by fire, let it be roasted by fire we carry the power of God we are connected to the Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name. We shall not suffer a wish to live. Whatever satanic dreams that are coming to peck, you know, to vex you, to be a thorn in your flesh, I decree and I declare that where you are, the Holy Ghost is then the power of of God is then the blood of Jesus which is the power is there to bring protection this is what I call Passover power Passover power is bringing protection no evil from the camp of the enemy that will come and touch you you are secured you and your family you are secured you and the and, 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 and your ministry you and your business you and your profession and then we are sending the destruction back to the sender in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has planted during the night, whatever the enemy has stolen during the night, it is the time for the power of God to bring resolution, to bring realignment, and to promote you into the highest level in the name of Jesus. Any operation at midnight, it shall not happen. 
but we are raising up we are calling the fire of the Holy Ghost we are calling we are praising God we are worshiping we are doing all these type of things in the name of Jesus we say my father my father in the name of Jesus remove any evil plantation on my children on my property on my work on my business my father all my friends enemies that are pretending to help me whereas they are sabotaging me expose them destroy them my father with the holy ghost fire let your fire destroy them whatever evil intention against us my father let it go back to them in the name of jesus you said my father the eaters of flesh shall eat their own flesh the drinkers of blood shall drink their own blood like a sweet wine any evil plantation let it pack its throat and go. This is the power that can recover every of your good material. Bend to become one. We are recovering every lost item, every lost material, every lost position. Now it's time up. It's for you to arise. It's for you to ascend. It's for you to change titles. It's for you to change levels in the name of Jesus. All those that are saying, who are you? Today they will say, how are you, sir? How are you, madam? How are you, pastor? How are you, apostle? How are you, bishop? They will salute you. They will call you with a very big title. Where the enemy thought they have buried you. The power of God is resurrecting anything that was buried. That will take you to another level. Any material that you have lost. Yes, it's coming back. It's coming back. Anything that was buried is coming back alive in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We are rolling every stone. This is the power. This power can unite various fragments of your body and turn them into one. Any hidden. Any hidden. Any hidden, any hidden, any hidden things in your body. You go to doctors, they try to diagnose you, they can't find anything. You are feeling pain, you are having some unstoppable bleeding, unstoppable, you know, pain, headaches, heartaches, whatever pains that you are experiencing. We say the power of God can unite various fragments of your body and turn them into one. It is our prayer, my Father, in the name of Jesus. The power that resurrected Christ from the dead. Let it unite various fragments of our bodies and turn them into one. This is the power that can bring together everything that has been destroyed. It will be resurrected. <laughs> Here we are serving a living God. Who is the restorer of life? They may destroy our marriages. They may destroy our works. They may destroy our families. They may destroy our ministries. They may destroy our promotions. They may destroy whatever that we want. But I am speaking that the power of God is bringing together everything that has been destroyed. Isaiah 18, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18. The Bible says, Forget the former things, nor things of old. When he is resurrected, verse 19 says, Behold, I am doing something new. This is God. In 2022, we are under open heaven. Our doors are perpetually open. Our gates are perpetually open. The King of Glory is entering in and out. No one can prevent it. That's why we say, lift up your heads, all you gates. All you everlasting doors be lifted up so that the King of Glory may come in. We carry the keys of Isaiah. 22, 22, the keys of David. When man opens, no one shall close. When man closes, no one shall open. In the name of Jesus, we carry the keys 
of Apostle Peter, whatever he was, he was operating heaven whilst he was here. He was operating under open heavens. Whatever he binds on earth, it is binding. Whatever he loses, it is loosened in heaven. We've got power, we've got dominion, we've got authority. We trample over the scorpions and the serpent. Behold, I'm doing something new. Behold, he's saying he is doing something new. Don't be stressed. Don't be afraid. He is at work. He is our father. He is at work. He's up to something in the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says, fear not. For I am with you. Though you go through waters, though you go through storms, though you go through fires, you shall not be drowned, you shall not be burned. For God is with us, He is Jehovah Shammah. We waited so long. We knew that this is the time when He is answering us. Because He has resurrected in the name of Jesus. This is the power that is bringing new things. Whatever new things that you are looking for. Yes, businesses are being resurrected. New marriages are taking place. Forget the former things, no things of old. God is going to give you the best desire. Yes, God is not going to give you a prayer point. God is not going to give you a knife, but is going to give you a wife. He's not going to, uh, to give you is going to give you a husband but not a headache it's going to give you a family it's going to give you members of the church those that have gone let them go there are new people who are coming that will embrace and take you into another level and take the, the work of the lord into another level this is the power that can revive every dead destiny our destinies are calling us. That's why my name is Wisdom. This is a, a, a prophetic name God gave me. Say, from today, your name is Wisdom. Your name is Wisdom. You will speak Wisdom. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Spirit of Wisdom, Spirit of Knowledge, Understanding, Power, Counsel, and Fear of the Lord is upon you. We are in 2022. He is resurrected. We are celebrating this resurrection power in the name of Jesus. We are celebrating this resurrection power that resurrected Christ from the dead. As he is aroused, we, 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 we rose up with him. We are seated in heavenly places. No wonder why we are, we are told to sit. As we sit, he is the one who is dealing with our infirmities. He's the one who is dealing with our challenges. He's the one who is dealing with whatever that is trapping us. But we are told, be comforted, be seated. Don't move. Sit down. Chillax. Take it cool. When you, when you rest, it means everything is perfected. This is the power that is reviving every dead destiny. People's destinies are destroyed. But we thank God that this power is reviving, is resuscitating, is rearranging. It is leveling. We say as, as Zechariah 4, 6, it is not by might, you know, by power, but by his spirit. The very same spirit is the very same power of resurrection. That's why we can stand boldly before the mountain and say, who are you? Mountain before us, pure wisdom got in there. Who are you, mountain, standing before Trevor Mohopoli? Who are you, mountain, standing before Kukunduguya? Who are you, mountain, standing before Peter Onias? Who are you, mountain, standing before Tembeli Sen Kabinde? Who are you, mountain, standing before, yes, George Siakumbina? Who are you, mountain, standing before? Makaretu Mukua, who are you mountain standing before us in the name of Jesus? You shall be leveled. Every mountain it will be leveled. 
We are speaking faith and the very same faith is the power of God. That is leveling every situation. Therefore I decree as a prophet of God that every dead destiny is being revived in the name of Jesus. We are stretching our tents. We are being blessed indeed. We are moving forward. We don't stand still. We are crossing over. We are, we are, we are, we are extending the work of the Lord. We are bringing testimonies and say, the power of God resurrected, revived, realigned all things. This is the power of God. The power that can go down into the man's foundation and make him whole in the name of Jesus. It was the power on the cross. When he was on the cross, there are seven miracles that were recorded. Darkness became at midday, midday became dark. Matthew chapter 27, verse 45, moving forward. Midday became darkness. Why? Because God was addressing the kingdom of darkness. He was reviving, restoring every lost item that was, was stolen by the devil. He was visiting the store warehouse of the devil. Where we are, we were repossessing our repos. He was repossessing all our possessions that were stolen by the devil in the name of Jesus. We are resurrected with him. Whatever that was stolen in the name of Jesus. Whatever that was exchanged in the name of Jesus. Whatever that was done at in the darkness. Today God confronted it. While she was on the cross. The Bible says there was an earthquake. Earthquake was shaking the foundation. Was shaking satanic foundations in our lives. Ancestral foundations. Spiritual marriages foundations. All the foundations. Wrong foundations. The Bible says... Psalms 11, 3. If the foundations are not destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? Therefore, the earthquake came and shook the foundations of the enemy. The earthquake came when Peter and Silas were sleeping. When they praised and worshipped God in that prison, the foundations shook, the gates, the doors were wide open. It is the power of God. It is the power of God. That is going down into our foundations. That is repairing our wrong foundations. Our ancestral worship as a foundation. Our blood shedding as our foundation as Africans. Even strong men, idolatry. This is the power of God. There is no power anywhere that can defeat the power of resurrection. Power of witchcraft, you will bow down. Power of false prophets, you will bow down. Power from anywhere, you will bow down. There is no power anywhere that can defeat the power of resurrection. There is no power anywhere that can change the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection cannot be arrested in the name of Jesus. The power of receive the power of resurrection. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There is no power anywhere that can embarrass the power of resurrection. No power anywhere. The sorcerers, the wise men of, of Pharaoh, when they threw the sticks down, they became snakes, they also did that. The, the water was changed into a blood. They were able to do that. But now, when it comes to this miracle God did, they said, Ah, ah this is the finger of God. May all your enemies see that the power of God, the power of resurrection, is the power of of the finger of God. Therefore, there is no power anywhere that can change 
this power of resurrection. There is no power anyway that can embarrass, that, it is, that can disgrace, that can shame the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. That is why Paul said, if I may know him, and the power that resurrected Christ from the dead. <laughs> we are restored. The power of resurrection. We are restored. Yes, we are resurrected from our slumber. We are resurrected from our sitting. We are resurrected from our standing. We are resurrected. We are we are rising up. We are, we the Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come. Thy glory has risen upon you. Therefore, nothing can embarrass God. Nothing can disgrace him. Nothing can shame him. Nothing can disappoint God. Nothing can oppress, suppress, or depress God because of the power. This mysterious power of resurrection is what many believers don't know how to revoke. You need to be able to revoke this power. After 30 years of Apostle Paul conversion, a man who has visited heaven three times is now praying this prayer. He is now writing this particular prayer. If I may know him, I know the power that resurrected Christ from the dead. Therefore, I'm speaking prophetic declaration upon him. Where you are watching, raise up your hands. This is a prophetic declaration. Your testimonies will give birth to another testimony in the name of Jesus. I decree as a prophet of God that anything good the enemy has killed in your life, let it receive resurrection power in the blood of Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 is talking about the creative and resurrection power of the Lord. In the beginning it was the way the way it was before, the way it was called. And everything was created by him, for him. If it was not him, it was not created. Whether it is dirt, business, whether it is dirt marriage, whether it is dirt school body, etc., let it receive resurrection now. Resurrection power resurrects whatever that the enemy is told. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, superpowers, spiritual wickedness, authorities, all things were created by him and for him. I am the one who created a smith. Isaiah chapter 54. He created the smith. They can prepare weapons, it's fine, but none of these weapons shall hurt you. No weapon facing against you that shall prosper. Whether visible or invisible, whether in heaven or on earth, whatever is supposed to be yours. That is dirty. Receive resurrection power. In the name of Jesus. The power of resurrection applied in everything. Not only to life and death, but in everything. It is the resurrection power that can ensure our justification. That shows Jesus that he defeated death. This is the power that unites us with Christ. This is the power that he confirms the deep truth of the scripture. This is the power that proves that Jesus Christ is the son of God. This resurrection power gives us Christians a living hope. This is the power that tells us that we shall be raised with Christ. Ephesians 2 6. This is the power that makes us to understand that we will judge the world in resurrection of Jesus. He is resurrected. He is with us. We conquer death. 
This is the power that conquers death for us. It is the foundation of the gospel. Raise up your hands as we pray. Say, my father, I plug my life into the resurrection power. In the name of Jesus. It is that resurrection power that can make all things exist. Everything is existing because of the resurrection power. We breathe the breath of life. Yes, into our lives. It is breathing the breath of life unto us. That is why we are alive and kicking. I am breathing the power of God. I am paying zero cent. But I am getting the benefit. Those who are in hospitals, those that are on coma, they can tell you that oxygen, how much it is. But we are receiving, we are breathing the resurrection power. No wonder why you are not dying. Yes, anything raises those physical and spiritual death in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, what is the most powerful weapon? Resurrection power is the most powerful and dangerous weapon. It is not the power of electricity. No, it is not the power of nuclear. No, it is the power it is not the power of wave. No, it is not the power of wind. No, power of resurrection. By the voice of resurrection, by the voice of resurrection, I am speaking life now. There are a number of people who were resurrected in the Bible. We've got a long list, hence I said the power of resurrection one. But today we are only going to look at one person who was resurrected from the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. That is the only one just to support this resurrection power in the name of Jesus. 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 The power of resurrection will go to my favorite scripture. Power of resurrection. But I wanted to package this chronologically so. But we'll also rearrange. I am touched by the scripture of uh, oh, there are many scriptures in my mind, but I want to take only one this time. I don't want to package everything into one. My father said I must give you one and the only so that you can concentrate and pray over it. In the name of Jesus. The scripture, the one that I will flow in. Second Kings, chapter eight, chapter four. I mean to say, Second Kings, chapter four. Second Kings, chapter four, verse eight. If you want to connect to this resurrection power, I want to touch base on the basis of of, 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 of resurrection. Second Kings chapter four verse eight. The Bible says the Shunammite woman hospitality. 
I want to teach you how to connect to the resurrection power. I want to tell you something. Did you know that men and women of God are the resurrection power? To your destiny, to your family, to your lives, and then, 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 then. That is why the Bible says in Exodus chapter 23, verse 20, Behold, I sent an angel to walk before you. Obey him. When you obey him, his, your enemies will be his enemies. You shall not experience death, you shall not experience pain, no sickness, no disease. Because you obey this angel. Therefore, as men and women of God, we represent this angel. We represent this Jesus Christ. That's why we need to be holy before God. I love the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman says, and it fell to the day, verse 8, on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem. Where was the great woman and she constrained, constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often he passed by the tent into a tither to eat. Verse 9. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. This is not just a, a man of God. This is a holy man of God. I perceive that this is the holy man of God who passes by continually. Verse 10, let us make him a little chamber. I pray thee on the wall and set him there a bed, a table, a stool, and the candlestick. And it shall be when he come to us he, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on that day that he, he came thither and returned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, verse 12, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all the care, with all the hospitality. What is to be done for you? Will that not be spoken for the king or to the captain of the host? And she is answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And the answered, Verily, she had no child, and her husband is old. And then he said, Call her, and when he called her, she stood in the door again, she stood on the opportunity. And the woman conceived all. And he said, About this season, according to thy time, you shall embrace a son. And he sh she said, Nay, my Lord, you, though men of God, do not lie unto thy head. There are things that we notice here. For us to connect to the resurrection power, may God give us a perception to perceive men and women of God, to perceive their needs. It must be on us. We don't perceive because we are after a certain reward. But because of our own hospitality, when you see that someone needs something, a man of God, nothing stops you to bless that man. I'm not saying that I must call you as a man of God and I must corner you to say, buy for me this, buy for me that. No, it must come for you without any reason, because of the passion. That's what I normally do to my father in the Lord. When I do something, I always think of him and say, oh, by the way, this is a man of God. This is a woman, woman of God. Why? How can I bless them? 
then I know that I'll be doing something for them. Therefore, it will take us to perceive that this is a man of God. Therefore, the woman did three things. The woman did three things. The woman did three things to Elisha. She perceived that this is the man of God. This is the holy man of God. As I said earlier on in one of my sermons, when you are a holy man of God, you maintain intimate and persevering communion with God. You must know God and God must know you. If you are a holy man of God, God must know you and you must know God. You must have that continuous communion with God. As a holy man of God, you must fully set apart yourself from religious and you know and moral compromise of this day and dedicate yourself to God of Israel. Set yourself apart from all the religious, the moral compromise. You know, the, 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 the idiosyncrasy that is taking place in today's world. In South Africa, is a very practical country where we see false prophets manifesting and doing all these nonsensical things. But set yourself, distance yourself from all these things. You must empathize with God over the sins of the covenant people and oppose the tide of idolatry and apostates. That's what we need to do. We need to do preach repentance. We need to rebuke. We need to correct. We need to speak the truth and shame the devil. We must not find ourselves. If I need a blessing, it is God who is going to bless me. At that point given time, I want to push myself. What I will do, I will always do the work of the Lord. When I mind his business, he is minding my business. I, I, I will not have a double standard. That is the holy man of God. You must not have a double standard. The spirit of the Lord was upon Elisha. Let our, the spirit of the Lord be upon us as men and women of God that are holy. It must enable us to speak with spiritual authority and God's representative to proclaim the word of the Lord faithfully so. We must not come with our ulterior motives with the intention of advancing ourselves. Heaven is waiting. You will see what heavens will do. Therefore, as prophets of enormous stature and gifts, our ministry must be affirmed by God with the mighty miracle signs and wonders. Sometimes God can keep quiet and do nothing until he speaks, until he gives me power. The resurrection power will do that. Ah, ah. Sometimes he will say nothing. He will say, my son, just preach, I will preach. Then this 